been riding bikes for a few years, um, mainly mountain biking and race bikes. But right now, what we want to do is we want to set up the brakes for BMX. And the brakes on the BMX are slightly different. So I'm making this video because there's not too much information um, on the, the internet about how to actually set these up. There's a little bit here and there, but because um, brakes on BMX aren't really popular, um, a lot of people just don't think about it. Um, so here's the tools that we're going to need. We're going to need an Allen key, and this will be whatever size fits your brake nut, so your brake caliper nut. This could be different, so I'm not going to give you the size. And we need a set of pliers to pull the cable back. Um, and a kind of wrench of some kind. I've got an adjustable one, that'll do. Um, and a screwdriver. And this is going to be to actually set where the calipers sit. It's probably worth adding that this is really bad. Don't do this. The, this, this cable is terrible. I need to replace it. Um, the reason for that is that if you ever need to make any adjustments to it or anything, you've got to deal with this. And when these go into your fingers, they hurt. So don't let your cables get like this. Try and keep them more like this. This isn't perfect, but um, with the end cap on it helps a lot. It just keeps it all twisting nicely. And so there's a few different things with the calipers and BMXs. And the first thing is that there's kind of two different types that I've seen. Um, the first one, and what seems to be the most popular, is this kit. And this is the old one that I use because it's broke. Um, but if the camera will focus, essentially what happens is that the tension is set by this nut. This sets the spring tension on, which basically that translates into how far back this should sit. So you can tighten the spring here and it will set how far away this is. Now on a BMX you might be used to screw and this is kind of why I got these because I'm more used to this style. And this is the other style that I've seen. And basically uh, you've got the spring kind of going around this serrated bit. It's like a serrated washer I think. But it kind of goes through actually, so it's not really a washer. But this spring, this tension is actually set by this bolt here. And that actually sets how how much tension there is on it. Kind of like if you were to turn the uh, bolt on these, this the, the kind of popular style. What happens is that you put your bolt in like this. And on this particular style, you would move it all the way in, tighten this in as much as you can so that you can't move it with your finger anymore. And then when, when you push it in, it should spring back. If it doesn't spring back, then there's a problem. So I try and show this. So there's moved all the way back. I'm going to try and do this with one hand. It's kind of hard, but it's the easiest way to show. Right. That's it. So, that's as tight as I can get it. And when we push here, it springs back nice and quick. That's what we want. So what that means is that when you pull on your brake, it's actually going to move back away from the rim. And obviously that's what you want, otherwise you're going to burn your pads in, make it hard for you to pedal, all that kind of stuff. So if you ever find that your brakes are sticking on the rim, it's either going to be because this, this bolt isn't set, or the screw isn't set properly, so it's too far into the rim. So that would mean that there's not enough tension on the, the spring inside. So you put more more tension on it and it'll move further away. Um, if it's constantly in, then you're probably going to find that this bolt is the problem, where it's just loosened off a tiny little bit. And that's what happened to me this morning, and is my reason for making this video. So, 
if you find that that's the case, then just check that, see if, see if it's loose, and then try moving this uh, the caliper arm back and tightening that back in. You'll probably find that'll sort it. So I've already sneakily put the two calipers on. Um, one thing that you're going to want to note with BMX calipers is that the um, arms for one of the sides is higher than the other. You can kind of see that here. You see? And the reason for that is that these both have to kind of counterbalance each other. So they've got to be in kind of the same position. Um, as they get pulled in, they'll be pulled towards each other. Um, and so into the rim. Uh, so you'll want to make sure that you're putting the right caliper on because it bikes upside down first um, and then the left caliper. One thing you want to watch out for is that when you're fitting these levers, because this one sits low, you might find that the top uh, caliper actually kind of rubs on the, the lower arm. So what you might want to do when you're tightening these nuts on, um, these bolts even, You'll want to kind of pre-tension this a little bit, um, the, the one that you've actually fastened on. Um, so in my case, uh, what I did was I held this down, pulled this back, and then tensioned on this one. So that's the, the right side one. Uh, because that was lower, there was actually a little bit of rub here, which meant that we couldn't get the, um, the arm as far into the tire as we could. And that means that there wouldn't have been as much tension on uh, basically kind of pulling the pads away from the rim. And you want, you basically kind of want as much tension as you can get there, in, in, in my experience. Um, because you can kind of play with these, um, th these screws a little bit to kind of choose where you want the um, pads to sit on the, the rim. So this is probably the hardest part, um, strength-wise. You, you kind of have to have a few things under control to do it. Um, when you are pulling this back onto this holder, um, there's a lot of tension that's already on the, the cable just because these calipers. Um, there's also tension on this because your cable stops it moving further back. Um, and also you've got the uh, different tension setters here and so on. So what I would normally suggest is an, you, you can just loosen this off and you can pull that back, but it's kind of hard to put load back onto this. So what I usually do is I usually take off this nut instead because that's got the nice clean cable on it and then pull that back. You can do it the other side, but um, I have a bit of a cable issue here. One of the top tips I would give you, though, um, would be to kind of bend this cable back a little bit. And the reason for that is that it actually holds this side of the cable on. So just to show you, because that was kind of hard to see, this is the cable I'm talking about. This one here. So you want to put this cable up into this slot and it just it just really locks the cables into place because um, what happened to me once is that I didn't do that and <laughs> this part actually came out of the holder so I ended up with no brakes bad times one thing that I want to show is how the pads actually fit in which is going to be the next step and um, it's easier to show with these off um, so basically where my fingers um, part those two washers, that's where the uh, caliper arm is going to be. Um, the reason for that is that the two kind of goldy looking uh, washers here are actually rounded on one side. And the two silver washers have uh, a kind of, a, a, it, they're kind of rounded inside. So basically what that means is that there's a little bit of flex like this. Um, on the, the kind of orientation of the pads. So you, you can have them leaning in on one side and out on the other side. You don't really want that. Um, but what it means is that when you're riding, there's always as much contact as there can be on the pad at any given time. Um, because it, it basically just kind of automatically f 
levels out onto the rim. Okay, so I've put the pads on um, and they're nice and aligned. That's one thing you're going to want to make sure of um, when you're setting these up. So you want to make sure that um, these are all perfectly straight um, on the rim. And basically get as much surface area as you can on the uh, on the rim. Just means you get more stuff and better. And we've done the same on the other side. And we're done. And the only thing that I had to do um, was set the tension here um, on this screw. And the cable just needed pulled out a little bit. And what that does is that just um, decreases the overall um, distance between the, the two rims. Um, basically because it's all shared on this. You may find that it's a better idea to actually use this instead to set the tension. Um, because then the cable is out of the way a little bit more. It's totally up to yourself. Um, I just prefer doing it this way because it's easier. Um, and now, if we spin the wheel and push the lever, we see that we get a good break. And I can even use my foot. <laughs> you can see that it's not moving. Done. Hope that's helped.